This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup Show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro, and solar, and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We start with some excellent and exciting news about EV adoption rates, specifically EV adoption rates right here in Aotearoa. According to sales data just published, EV sales in the nation during December rose to their highest ever levels, with more plug-in vehicles sold than internal combustion engined ones. EVs accounted for 39% of all cars registered, with a significant number of them comprising of grey market Nissan Leafs from Japan. Plug-in hybrids, meanwhile, accounted for another 12%. It's believed the threat that the government may soon end and EV subsidies, plus implementation of a new ute tax that increases the cost of running petrol and diesel vehicles caused the spike. But be warned, Kiwi plug-in owners will soon have to start paying RUC, that's road user charges, from April 1st. Elon Musk surprised everyone on Monday this week by making some thinly veiled threats on X that if he didn't get some form of increased voting power at Tesla, he wouldn't expand Tesla's AI development. We don't have the time to go in depth here, although we have made a video on the subject, but it's worth noting that right now, Elon Musk holds around 13% of Tesla. Something he suggested on X wasn't enough to ensure he wasn't ousted by what he referred to as, quote, dubious interests, end quote. He did suggest that he'd be fine with a dual class voting structure, which means he'd retain his current shareholding, but as CEO, his vote would carry more weight than standard shareholders. It's not clear what his motivations are, but it'll be interesting to see how shareholders and Wall Street respond to the news. This month, we've seen yearly delivery figures for various automakers trickle in, and this week we got Mercedes-Benz's global sales figures for last year. And impressively, Mercedes-Benz's EV sales dramatically took off last year, with one in three cars sold with Benz or Smart Badging coming with a plug. Although that figure does include plug-in hybrids, which accounted for 19% of all sales for the brand, the figures for EVs sold under both passenger car brands aren't to be sniffed at, with 222,000 Mercedes-Benz and 18,000 Smart Cars sold being all-electric. At the same time, Mercedes-Benz Vans reported it sold 22,700 electric vans, which is maybe why these G-Wagons were doing donuts of joy at CES earlier this month. It's no secret that the world's oil companies have known for a really long time about the impacts of burning massive amounts of fossil fuels on our world climate. And while there have been successful court cases resulting in massive fines for the oil and gas industry, they have, for the most part, gotten away with encouraging massive air pollution. This week, though, good news from the US Supreme Court, which declined a request to move a court case brought against Coke Industries, the American Petroleum Institute and ExxonMobil by the state of Minnesota. The plaintiffs had pushed for the case to be made a federal one, but for the third time in a year, SCOTUS decided that cases against big oil for their role in climate change should be heard in the state where it was filed. Justice cometh. At least, we can hope it will. For a really long time, Japan has been considered the home of the hydrogen fuel cell revolution. And while automakers like Toyota and Korean company Hyundai have tried to bring hydrogen fuel cell vehicles to other markets around the world, they've never really taken off. The reason for this, for the most part, is that hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles offer few benefits over battery electric vehicles. 
They have to rely on expensive and unreliable filling infrastructure and have less interior space for occupants and luggage due to the relative size of hydrogen fuel cell drivetrain components. Now, it seems even Japanese customers are ditching hydrogen fuel cells, with data from Hydrogen Insight claiming that fuel cell car sales in Japan have fallen by 83% over the last two years, replaced almost exclusively by battery electric vehicle sales instead. It's long been a claim of EV naysayers that the transition to electric vehicles will bring the electrical grid to its knees, cause widespread blackouts and make electricity more expensive for everyone. Yet a new publication from the American Council for an Energy Efficient Economy, or ACEEE for short, shows that's a long way from the truth. Summarising three different independent studies, the organisation shows there's now very strong evidence to show that the more electric cars on the road, the better the electricity grid will become, thanks to a better distributed electrical load across the grid. Additionally, thanks to expected charging patterns of EVs, it points out that electrical grid generation will be more consistent, reducing peaks and troughs across the day and making electricity a lot cheaper to generate, since more predictable consumption means less reliance on expensive peaker power plants. Frankly, it's great news for everyone. Solid state battery specialist QuantumScape, which is partly owned by Volkswagen, published details of a brand new cell design this week that is unlike anything we've seen before. Called the Flex Frame Cell, the design mixes properties of pouch cells and prismatic cells, resulting in a battery cell design that's capable of expanding and contracting as the battery is charged and discharged and as ambient temperatures change. It helps alleviate some of the mechanical stress and strain that's traditionally plagued solid-state battery design and should lead to a longer lifespan when compared to traditional solid-state battery cell setups. If you want to think of it slightly differently, it's almost like QuantumScape has given cells the ability to breathe as they take on and to give out electrical charge. One of the biggest frustrations people seem to have with public charging infrastructure for EVs, other than reliability, are the massive hoops that you have to jump through just to pay for charging. But in Europe, things are about to get a whole lot easier for EV drivers thanks to the European Alternative Fuels Infrastructure Regulation, which, it's just been confirmed, will come into effect on April 13th this year. What does it do? Well, it mandates that from that date, all new DC fast charging stations open to the public must have either a card reader or contactless payment capability, while lower power stations must have dynamic QR code authentication to enable a similar seamless charging experience. Existing stations have until 2027 to retrofit to the same payment options. At last. After it was launched in Europe some time ago as the Fiat Ducato EV, Stellantis has officially launched the same electric panel van in North America under the Ram Promaster EV nameplate. Entering into a market that's already occupied by the Ford e-Transit and Mercedes-Benz e-Sprinter, not to mention the Rivian EDV and GM Bright Drop delivery vehicles, the Ram Promaster EV looks very much like its gasoline sibling, but packs a 110 kilowatt hour battery pack and up to 150 kilowatts of DC fast charging capability. Stellantis says it will be offered in a variety of different guises, including delivery and cargo configurations, with a range of up to 162 miles, that's 260 kilometres. That might not seem like much, but it's well within the daily delivery routes of most US carriers in most urban and suburban areas. When Tesla began deliveries of its Cybertruck, it showed a video in which a Tesla Cybertruck towed a Porsche 911 on a trailer faster over a claimed quarter mile than an identical Porsche 911 could drive over the same distance. Shortly after the event, plenty of people noted that the video Tesla showed didn't demonstrate a quarter mile race, but rather an eighth of a mile race. And there's been plenty of online discussion about this. 
Last weekend, Engineering Explained became the latest YouTube channel to weigh in on the matter, indicating in a frankly excellent video how Tesla's video appears to be misleading, noting that there were discrepancies between what Tesla showed and what Tesla claimed, as well as what the maths suggested was actually possible. Almost immediately following that video's release, however, Tesla's lead engineer for Cybertruck spoke out, noting the fact that the quarter mile was an eighth of a mile demonstration wasn't due to any other reason than safety, stating that the trailer they were using wasn't rated for the speed that the full quarter mile would have resulted in the trailer traveling. We're not passing judgment, we're just reporting who said what. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? If you are and you live in Ataroa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that is perfect for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, at least for now, charging providers you can charge up with, and of course, how to get clean, green charging at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. The annual COP conference into climate change and what nations of the world should do to tackle it has long been criticised for making grandiose statements that legally amount to very little. Last year, during COP28, the conference came under additional criticism, not only because it was hosted by one of the world's largest oil-producing nations, but also because of statements made by the host's president over the world potentially going back to living in caves if society moved to ban fossil fuels entirely. Now there is a new controversy, namely that COP29, which by the way is hosted by Azerbaijan, another oil producing nation, the committee announced for organising the event is entirely made up of men. Given that one half of the world's population are women and that at COP28, it was very careful to note that, quote, indigenous peoples, local communities and governments, women and youth and children, end quote, all play a part to bring about a more sustainable and equitable future for us. It's not just disappointing, but frankly, enraging. And finally, Ever since Ford unveiled the F-150 Lightning electric pickup, there's been a pretty consistent question over if Ford would ever make the F-150 Lightning an off-road capable truck similar to the F-150 Raptor. This week, the company answered that question by unveiling a one-off custom F-150 Lightning called the Lightning Switchgear. Built in collaboration with Ford Performance, RTR Vehicles and famous rally driver Vaughn Gittin Jr., the truck has heavily modified custom suspension, an adjustable ride height that varies between 5 inches on road and 13 and a half inches off road, and underbody protection, as well as a good rollover cage. If the thought of a massive three tons or more of metal jumping off road thrills you, this is probably the electric truck for you. Personally, while I think it's neat from an engineering point of view, I would much rather have a functional, affordable work truck I can haul animal feed and wood in. Which is good, because I've got most of that, apart from the affordable bit. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, it's time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch and you'll be helping the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. We are still in January, so it can still be your New Year's resolution. I will be back this time next week as usual, but be sure to check out other great content on this channel, including that produced by the lovely Gavin Kiwi Evie Shoebridge. He's always doing something amazing and his videos are always very, very informative and incredibly entertaining. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Enjoy the rest of your week. Kakite. See you next time.